Here you go, honey. Here's your coffee. Oh, okay, thank you, darling. I got your breakfast ready, too. Okay, thank you. Here you go, baby. You know a lot of people don't dig being taken prisoner. Oh, you got a busy day, y'all. Yeah. Sick. Yeah, it's all fine. Uh, I'm gonna be crazy. Oh, baby, I'm so sorry. But you see, in my particular case, I know you. You do fine. They took me into thank you, baby. A hostage of love. Let me tell you how it all went down. Dig it. It's good, but now I'm gonna get dressed and get ready for work. Okay, baby. Okay. I'm just a hostage now. Hostage, love. They tied me up in bondage and they chained it to the wall. I said a little prayer, you know my record sells my fall. If I start to drop, you know completely off the charts, I'm gonna get my knife out. Okay, baby. Mm -hmm. See you later, darling. Okay. Love you. Okay, bye bye. Love you. They're conservative about S and M. I'm just a hostage now. Hostage, your love, a love, a love. You're just a hostage now. Hostage, your love, a love, a love. You're just a hostage now. Hostage, your love, a love, a love. having some really bad dreams lately and I've been so unhappy and I'm just so upset about what had happened in the past with my boyfriend. Really? Well, tell me about your dreams. Well, he's been calling me a lot of bad names and telling me I'm fat and ugly and I know different. I know that I'm an attractive lady and I think he's even jealous of poor Fifi. He was telling me that, that I have to go ahead and and get rid of Fifi. He's jealous of the dog? He's jealous of poor Fifi. I'm sorry, Fifi. Yes, he's jealous of her. Uh, he maybe, maybe he should see a psychiatrist. He's jealous of Fifi. Well, Fifi's harmless. Fifi's harmless, and she's a good dog. She's always real sweet to me. Well, what? Uh, tell me about the bad dreams you've been having. Well, I had some bad dreams that... Um, that I was lost in the woods and I couldn't find my way back. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know what that means, Doctor. Mm, it means you're maybe searching for something. I'm searching for something. Maybe searching for a, a better relationship. Well, Doctor, that, that sounds probably right. Maybe with someone that's not so abusive. Maybe so. I think so. And 
Last time you t- mentioned that one time you, you were you were kidnapped by him. Yes, I was kid. I was kidnapped. Fifi was kidnapped. We were kidnapped. Where did he take y'all? He took us out to the woods. Maybe that has something to do with the dream. Yes, I think you're right. Because that woods was terrifying to you, and that's why you keep reliving it in your dreams. Yes, because I didn't know where I was. Oh. I'd never been by there. It took me a long time to find my way back. Does he try to control you and keep you away from your friends and family? Yes, he sure does. What does your uh, family think of him? Well, they really didn't like him very much. They thought he was a little strange. How is he strange? Well, because he has so many other hobbies that were not like the ones that we normally have. Uh-huh. You know, just really strange things. What kind of hobbies? Well, he liked to cut off the, the tops of the flowers in his backyard. And I don't understand why he would do stuff like that. He just, cuts off the flowers? He cuts off the flowers and just leaves the stems, yes. That's, that's bizarre. So, I thought so too, so I'm just, just waiting to see what's going to happen, but I don't think I want to go back. He doesn't, he's not abusive with you, is he? Is he physically abusive? No, he's not. Oh. He's just mentally abusive. And he doesn't like Fifi. So, I just don't know what else to do. Tell me about your trip to uh, L.A. The trip to L.A., I was feeling really, really bad because Fifi and I were, had been lost a long time. And he thought it would be all better by taking us to L.A., and, um, you know, that there was a ransom. Fifi got kidnapped again, and there was a ransom note, and it said that they wanted $10,000 to get her, for me to get her back. Do you think that it, he did that, kidnapped her? I don't, I don't know, because when, when Fifi came back, poor Fifi, just sit there for a minute, Fifi. When Fifi came back, he was with me, and they, I got this letter right here. You want to see it? And it said that I, I had to pay $10,000 or else I wouldn't get Fifi Did back. you show this to the police? I did. What'd they say? Well, they said they said to call all of these different organizations like Rescue, Rescue, um, the Doggy Rescue and Dogs at Large and just to tell everyone to put up lots of pictures and signs of Fifi. Did you pay the 10000 I did. They never caught him? They never caught him. But when we went on this trip to L.A., when we were outside at the swimming pool, I asked, I asked my love for some money to go buy a souvenir for Fifi. And when I went in there, he gave me a $50 bill. And when I went in there, I had marked all the dollars that I had given to the kidnapper. And um, when I got that kidnapping, when I got that bill, I saw that red dot on there. And I got really scared because then I knew that it was him. It was him that he had kidnapped Fifi or had somebody he had, no, he had a co- accomplice. He had an accomplice. And so they probably split the money. They split the money, I'm sure. So when was the last time you seen him? It's been a while. I decided... Months? It's been a few months. Well, maybe it's better you never go back to him. Maybe you, you should uh, start looking for a, a, new, a new man in your life. One that's not jealous of Fifi. Doctor, are you single? No, I'm married. I'm happily married. Do you have a brother? Uh, he's deceased. Do you have a cousin? <laughs> None that are not married. <laughs> well, doctor, if you know somebody, like, send him my way, because I am in the market for a new man. Okay. In my life. All righty. So, if you can find one for me, I sure wouldn't mind. <laughs> okay. I was wondering if I could make an appointment for Fifi to come and see you regularly. Okay, I just get with my uh, secretary, Isabel. Okay. 
and uh, see what dates we have open on the calendar. She takes care of all that for me. Thank you so much. Oh, good luck. So nice. Well, you are too. You're a beautiful person, and just think positive, and you'll find Mr. Wright. He's out there somewhere. Well, I'm going to start looking. Are you sure you're not single, doctor? I have, there's a picture of me and my wife on the wall oh, right over there. Oh, that's a beautiful picture. Oh. Yeah, we've been together over 30 years, and we have four lovely kids. But don't tell, her, don't tell her I asked you. <laughs> no, I won't. Okay. Everything that we say in here is confidential anyway between doctor and patient, so you have nothing to worry about. Okay, I was And saying. Fifi won't have anything to worry about either. Well, I was hoping I wouldn't have to put She's my... a good dog. Well, thank you. She is a good dog, aren't you, Fifi? Okay, Miss Owens, well, listen, just make another appointment and come back anytime you well, like. Thank you so well, much. Thank you so much. Bye bye, Miss Owens. And bye bye, little Fifi. <laughs> you can make an appointment too. Oh, ah, it's baby. happy dog. Happy dog. It's happy. Okay, Fifi. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you, Miss Owens. I'll so see welcome. you at the next appointment. Well, you're so welcome. Okay. Thank you. I like your shirt. Oh, well, thank you, Miss okay. Owens. You have a good day. God you. bless you. Bye bye. How was your visit, Miss Owens? I had the most wonderful visit with the doctor. And so did Vivi. Oh, she's so happy. Look at her. Did you like the doctor? You did? Oh, well, she's. Do you like her? Say hello. Oh, hey, am I scheduling you again for the next Yes, minute? please do. Okay, let me check. Okay. It looks like he has it open October 6th in the morning. That is perfect. And how many am I making? Two appointments, one for me oh, okay. and one for Fifi. All right, we're doing two appointments, one right after the other. Is that okay, Fifi? Fifi? Fifi. Oh, yes. Fifi says yes. Okay. So do you want me to send you a text with a reminder? Yes. Or, or, no. okay. And you can send one to Fifi, too. Oh, okay. She has her own little phone, too. Oh, wow. Could you give me her number? I shall. Yes. I will text it to you. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. So good to see you. You're so beautiful. Thank you. It's so pretty to me. So pretty today. I like your string of pearls. They're beautiful. Thank you. You take care of my visit. Thank you so much. I like your flowers. They look so fresh. Do you want to smell this, Fifi? Ooh, Fifi. How do they smell? Did you like the way they smell, Fifi? Fifi says, what do you say, Fifi? Yes. Oh, okay. All right, Fifi. Well, let's say, say bye-bye. Bye. It's good to see you again. Have a great day. You too. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye-bye. Tell the doctor I said bye-bye. Okay, well, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, hello. Hi. How are you? I'm fine. Great. What's your name? McNair. My friends call me Mac. Hey, Mac. How are you? I'm precious. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Are you here to see the doctor? I have an appointment. That's wonderful. That's great. How long have you been seeing Dr. Carson? Three years. Three years. That's wonderful. That's great. So am I. What are you getting treated for? Being treated for sexual addiction. I love sex. So am I. I have a sexual addiction also. We should get together and have dinner and drinks. That'd be great. I would love to. Yes, let me give you my phone number. Mm. Who's the next patient? Mac. Oh my God. <laughs> I thought you might need this. <laughs> here, just keep this glass. I'll just drink you out of here. Okay, thank you for the aspirin. 
send them in. I love your fingernails. Those are fabulous. Thank you. Yes, please call me anytime. We'll have a lot of fun together. All right. Thank you. McNair, how are you doing today? I'm doing fine. Probably. Why don't you lay down, have a seat, and tell me what's on your mind. Okay, give me a moment. Oh, no. I'm still having trouble with sexual addiction. And I was going to tell you what started everything. Okay. I live in Florida in the 1950s. There's a very good looking girl that lives down the street. She was about three years older than me. I think she's about 11. I might have been seven. I don't know how old I was. She comes down to my mom's and dad's house and asks if I could come outside and play with her. My mom said, yeah. And um, <clears throat> I go outside and the girl takes her clothes off on the side at the side of the house. I got clothes on. She didn't. My mom came around the corner and saw that. And my mother's a Cherokee Indian, and she lost her mind. That was that was the first thing that I ever did as a, a prostitute. I didn't get paid. I just had an experience in Florida. Mm -hmm. I moved to Atlanta, Georgia in 1959, and in 1976 got a job in a hotel as a maintenance man, electrician, I'm electrician. The fir first trip, bar in Atlanta is in the basement of the hotel. There are only three people that can go in the girls' dressing room. It's the owner, the security guard, and me, the maintenance man. The, the room is full of naked girls. I'm sitting down with them, hanging out, and uh, it was a pretty good job. I got a job in a discotheque uh, in the year 1984 as a light operator. I ran the lights over the dance floor. And when the DJ went to the bathroom, I go down and play the records on the turntables. Mm -hmm. And after I worked in the hotel for 20 years, I've seen a lot. You know, this is a high-rise hotel in Atlanta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. But it was a good job. But working in a discotheque and living in a hotel, kind of a, I don't know, crazy in a way. Well, I met girls in the hotel that wanted me wanted to come to my room and do things. And I would do it. And I never really recovered from that. I've only, <coughs> Dr. Carson, I've only, I barely recovered. But I wanted to tell you about the girl from Florida. I, when I worked at the hotel, occasionally I would work the switchboard, a little painting, and they had an old-fashioned elevator where you manually had to use it. And there was a girl that stayed at the hotel for a month. Very good looking. She was from Tampa, Florida. And um, uh, I, I, the, the laundry room is in the basement of the hotel. She's up on the eighth floor. It's a big hotel in line. She rings the bell on, for the elevator. I go get her. She gets on the elevator. I take her to the laundry room. She got back on the elevator a little while later, and I stopped the elevator between floors and turned and looked at her, and I said, can I kiss you? She said, yes, I kissed her. And I'm wearing red silk Chicago Bulls basketball shorts. I kissed her, and all of a sudden, she got on her, her knees and pulled my shorts down, and then she moved back to Florida, and I lost her. Um, I cried, I really and truly did. Oh, I've got to tell you this, uh, Dr. Carson. I was a CB radio operator when I was young, talking on CB radio. And I met a guy on the radio. Uh, we would meet uh, in a park. And I saw his, I had a little bitty cheap CB radio. He had this big CB radio in his car. I said, how much did it cost? And he said, $300. I said, how do you get that kind of money? He goes, there's a gay guy that likes 
young teenagers to walk around his apartment to do maid service to clean the apartment. And he gives you $200 for one hour of cleanup duty, May. And I knew where the apartments were. I used to be a carpenter there when it was under construction. And I went to the apartments. No, I called him first, and he said, okay. Then I go to the apartments. He lets me in. I go to the <clears throat> back bathroom to take a shower real quick. I come back out with no clothes on. And all I have to do is just do a little maid service, you know, clean the dishes and stuff. Mm -hmm. And after an hour, he said, your money's at the, by the door to get out. I have, I have a motorcycle outside. Oh, but he never touched you? No, he didn't. No, no, he you just had to clean the house? Yes. Oh, okay. That's How many times did you do that? I did it twice. Oh. Now, when I was getting ready to leave, he said, would you like to come back in a couple of days? I said, yeah, I'll call you first. I went back again, another $200. So I'm making $400 for two hours of work. Well, that's pretty good money. I don't know very many people that make that. I do attract a lot of attention. I do, I really do. So what are your suggestions? Is there a way I can be healed? When did you start painting your fingernails? It started when I fell asleep with one of my girls, and she did it while I was asleep. When I woke up, I saw it, and I got to thinking, I kind of like this. You know, it looks fine. Well, but the only thing I can tell you is the only way to try to cure this is you just got to keep the bull in the barn and don't let the bull out of the barn. You might have to uh, write a prescription for something to settle me down, because I'm really intense. Well, I can write your prescription for Valiums. Oh, okay. All right. What okay. pharmacy do you go to? I go to CVS over there by Church's Fried Chicken. No, uh, at, at, uh, Goliad Road. Yes, Goliad. Okay, well, I'll send it there. You can pick it up later this afternoon. Okay, well, that'll be fine. Okay, well, is there anything else you'd like to tell me? Well, I've been declared insane by psychiatrists, but you already know that. I'm kind of wild. I have been tested at the nursing home. I was in a nursing home for four months and I'm tested. I don't have HIV disease. Uh, they say I have a really good health. I don't smoke cigarettes. They did a uh, EKG on the MRI, everything. They put you in the tube and scan you. And they said, I'm perfect. Well, I already knew I'm perfect. To be a prostitute, you gotta be perfect. You can't weigh too much and you can't weigh too little. I weigh 170 pounds and I'm six feet. That's healthy weight, and I know what I'm talking about. Because I worked 11 years in a vitamin store as a salesman, and we sold male sexual enhancement pills, Viagra. And I was their top salesman, and they liked me. But I think um, I've finished. Finish. Okay. Well, listen, I'll send that prescription over to the CBS on Goliath. Yes. And if you'd like to make another appointment, just see Isabel, my secretary, on the way out. Yeah, that, that'd be fine. Just ask her to set her date up and she'll look at the calendar. Uh, okay. Okay, Mr. McNair. Okay. You have a good day and be careful out there prostituting because it's a dangerous lifestyle. I'm going to need some help getting up. Uh, if you'll help me. All right. <laughs> I might have to help you. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, we hit the door for you. Okay. okay, make an appointment now with this bell. Okay, I'll go right up there and see her. Okay, thank you. You're very, very well -written. Hey, Mac. Hi. I hope your session went well. It did. It, it did. Uh, I'm not sure I can ever be really cured for sexual addiction, but at least I'm not even sure I'm trying. <laughs> I'm having a lot of fun. I meet a lot of people. But he wants me to make an appointment with him. Oh, so we got the car seat Um, What would be a good day to come back? Yes, let me do the calendar. Okay. I have an opening on October the 8th in the morning. Oh, I don't remember that. that. Work on pay? You can have these. Okay. You want me to text you, or can you remember that? Um, I can remember that. Okay. And thank you so very much. I actually feel better than I did when I came in. Okay. See thank you later. All right, see you on October 8th, 30. Okay, thank you. Have a good day. I'll be fine.
I am Jerry Allen. I went to college with Dr. Carson. I'm just wondering, may I sneak back there, just kind of visit a bit? Yeah, there's somebody back there right now. Oh, excellent. Thank you very much. Hello. Hi. Jerry, long time no see. Been a while. So what's the problem? Uh, I don't even know. It's porn 24-7. He's picking up guys at all hours of the night. Men coming and going. I know what they're doing. And I'm afraid he's going to get sick, maybe even die. I'm up to here. I don't know. I don't. And, and so I'm coming to you. I'm coming to you. I don't know. Okay. Well, listen. Why don't we go out there and knock him up? What's the matter? Precious. Well, why don't we go out here and I can meet Precious, and then we can come back in here and we can talk a while and see what we can do. I met my wits end. Yes, please. Okay. That sounds good. Let's go. Doctor, this is my child, Precious. Yeah. Have you met anybody recently you might be interested in? As a matter of fact, I have, Dr. Carson, in your lobby. I met a beautiful man, a guy named Mac. Mac Nair, old man. Yeah, with painted fingernails, so just a darling kind of guy. So the, the fingernails turn you on. Huh? They do turn me on. It's oh, so okay. erotic. <laughs> so, what's your name? Isabel Pena. And uh, we exchanged numbers, so hopefully we get to go out to dinner and have some drinks. Probably go to Bill Miller's and have some barbecue sandwiches. And then maybe go out to a gay bar and do a little dancing. Oh, well, that be just adorable. Maybe if you could find a man to settle down with, you wouldn't have to be a sex addict and keep going out, you know, around town. Be sure it pleases to the eyes. So, uh... You married? <laughs> no, I prefer my freedom and independence. Oh, in the same way. That's what I've been looking for. Another sexual addict like myself. We'll get along great. We'll have a great time. So, what do you say we have uh, dinner? Would you have dinner with me tonight? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Alright. Well, hopefully, you know, y'all can maybe hook up permanently and then you won't have to be, you know, out catwalking all the time and putting yourself in danger with, you know, with maybe trying to catch something or you could pick up the wrong guy and he could kill you. That's right. Because right. this world is, I'm not supposed to say this because I'm a psychiatrist, but this world is full of nuts and fruitcake. You're absolutely correct. I, I mean, that's what keeps me in business. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not picking on you, Miss Francis. <laughs> I'm just saying that's people come for me for help and advice. That's right. So if I was you, I would concentrate on just one man, a steady relationship with just one man, where you're not, you know, whoring around town constantly. Well, I might pick you up uh, about an hour, an hour and a half from now. Okay, sounds good. All right. Too much of a nose. I'm going to touch something else. And so maybe tonight, I, I wish you good luck on your date with Mac. I hope it turns out to be a wonderful success. And the best of luck to both of y'all. Thank you, Dr. Carson. You're so knowledgeable. I feel so comfortable and so confident. That's why Mac and I are here as sex addicts, because you're a very recognizable, very well-renowned 
psychiatrist. So thank you for your help, and I hope it does work out with Mac and I. I'm really excited. Okay, I'm excited for you too. Thank you, Dr. Carson. Well, it was nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. Yeah, God bless you. Let me get the door for you. Thank you, Dr. Carson. You have a wonderful day. Thank you, and Doctor. Good luck. Thank you, Doctor. Bye bye. Bye. Oh, thank you, baby. You know exactly just what I needed. Uh, doing this for over 30 years, this job is driving me crazy. I can only imagine. Oh, boy. He said it went well. Yeah, it yeah. did. Uh, maybe for him, not <laughs> for me. Okay, thank you, baby. No problem. Until the next one. Okay, thank you. Is Walter available? He is going back. Thank you. Susan, what a surprise! Hi, Walt. I'm going to our grandson Kevin's fifth birthday party. I don't know if you can go with me. I'd love to, but I have one more patient to see this afternoon. Oh. Okay, well, I bought him some cute clothes and I bought him this cake. Oh, I'm sure you'll like that just fine. Okay. Step down and give me a kiss. Okay, sweetie. Bye bye. Now you drive careful. Yes, sir. Bye bye. The Colonel just called and he just canceled. He scheduled his appointment. Okay, great. How are you doing today, baby? I'm doing good. Well, come on in here. I thought my damn wife would never leave. Oh, I'm so sick of that bitch. Mm. Oh, you on the couch, you? Yeah. oh yeah. Mm. You cheap bastard! What are you doing? I'm gonna she take the cleaners and I'm gonna take you for a divorce. Well, she fainted and I was giving her mouth to mouth resuscitation. Well, I've got it all on camera, okay? Honey, it's true. Well, you're lying, cheating, bastard, and a piece of crap. And I'm not going to put up the. Honey! Enjoy your fucking cake, prick. Carson's office? Yes, he's here. This is Dr. Carson. Oh, hello, Precious. How are you today? Oh, hello, Dr. Carson. How are you? Listen, Dr. Carson, I've got great news. That beautiful man that I met in the lobby, Mac, has proposed, and we're getting married, Dr. Carson. What? You're getting married? I hope you're happy for us. And we're so excited. I look forward to meeting a man like him one day. And I did, I finally did. I'm in love, Dr. Carson. We're both in love with each other. He treats me so well. Well, that's great, congratulations. And by the way, Dr. Carson, my dad wants to pay for the wedding and he would like for us to have it at your office. Well, yeah, I guess you could have the wedding here. Uh, tell your fa father, Jerry, to bring $2,500 to rent the building for the band, for the preacher, and all the refreshments. Yeah, we could do it Sunday at 4 o'clock. That'd be perfect. Mac and I are really excited. Okay, talk to you soon. Bye-bye. I'll have it all ready for you. I'll see you there.
Bye bye. Oh boy. I would have liked to take you to dinner, but I guess I'm gonna go home and try to repair this with my wife so she doesn't really divorce me. What do you think I should do? I think that's ended. You think it's over? I think it's over. Well, I'll give it one more chance. We've been married over 30 years. I guess you can try. I guess I can try. At least try to make it to your grandson's party. Well, I know at the party she's going to tell everybody what happened. They're all going to hate me and I'm going to be a villain, so I'm sure not going to that. So I'll just go home and try to patch things up and see how it goes from there. Don't worry, you still have your job. Yeah, I was wondering about that. But if she says I gotta fire you if, if she doesn't want to get divorced, I gotta fire you. I know. I'll just tell her I divorced, fire, fired you, and I really won't. <laughs> More lies, huh? Yeah. <laughs> That's good More work. lies and deception. <laughs> Well, you know, it's a cheating situation all the way around. I, you she, weren't careful. She's probably cheating on me. Okay, baby, listen. I'm going to go try to patch up my marriage, and I'll see you tomorrow at the office. Okay. Let me know. Okay, baby. Bye-bye. Thank you. Plastic surgery Crack your billies on the dynasty Big mouth divas talking about some trash Getting outrageous for their dirty cash Take in the news, get yourself made Fake guys in the news, it's a car baby From Godzilla's to marriage boot camps And all those skanky Change the locks on the doors. You're a cheat master. Honey, she fainted. I was just giving her mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. You lying bastard. I'm not stupid. Come on, honey. Look, just get the fuck out of here. Well, let me get some of my clothes at least. I put a box out here for you. I'll put more out tomorrow. But I'm not going to do anything until tomorrow. Hey, I'm going to call the cops on you. You don't leave. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to subdivide property. In Fall City? In You're Fall not going to do that in Fall yes, City. Yes, I am. Yes, you I am. You bitch. I can do whatever I you want. You bitch. You screwed up. Please get out of here.
Dearly beloved, we're gathered here today to unite these beautiful people in matrimony. Is there anyone who may object to this marriage? Speak your peace now. Okay. Miss Precious Anna, do you take Sam McNair to be your awfully wedded husband? Do better or worse, richer and poor? I do. Mr. Sam McNair, do you take Miss Precious Allen to be your awfully wedded husband? Do richer or poor to death do your part? I do. God bless. May we have the rings. of God and the power in me, I pronounce you, man and wife, you may kiss your bride. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. and Mrs. Sam McNair. Hey preacher, I came to Texas looking for some action and I found it. Where did you find it at? Right here in this window. I know that's right. right. Beautiful. I like it a lot. <laughs> and this is my commanding officer. Amen. And now he, every now and then he gets out of control. I have to kind of push him a little bit. <laughs> Keep him oh, right. stable. Oh, and this thing here. Oh, brother. Hey, you're married now. Oh, you not forget about that. <laughs> you're right, you are. I hope I did okay. Time to cut the cake.
lost my baby in the sanctuary city. I lost my baby in the sanctuary city. Six or seven times A violent past With multiple crimes There was a warrant Out for his arrest But it got lost In a pile of papers on the desk I lost my baby in a sanctuary city It was at her expense I don't understand it Cause it makes no sense Who has all the rights Who decides what's fair Cause she would still be here If he hadn't been there My baby in a sanctuary city. I lost my baby in a sanctuary city. I lost my baby in a sanctuary city. I lost my baby in a sanctuary city. songs they got a big contract on so could you please get it up all the way from hollywood california chas and chastity to be me he or she she or he I got to be free he or she she or he whatever will be he or she she or he I've got to be free Eric or Erica it's plain to see Eric or Erica, 
you're on my mind. I got you, babe. You got me. Our love is so blind. He or she, she or he. Our love is so kind. He or she, she or he. I'm so inclined. He or she, she or he. Our love is so kind. Eric or Erica. It's plain to see. I got you, babe. You got me. Eric or Erica, you're on my mind. I got you, babe. You got me. He or she, she or he. Whatever will be, he or she, she or he, I've got to be me. Yes, sir. This is a subpoena for you, and on there it tells a court date and time and some more information that you need to understand. Oh, God. I don't believe what she really went through as they filed for a divorce. She did, apparently, and I've been through two of them. Don't worry about it. It's not that big a deal. All right. Well, we'll see what, we'll see what happens. Yes, sir. Okay. Have a, good luck to you. Yes, sir. Thank you. You're not my love. 